Good morning. We're going to look this morning at using YouTube to flip your classroom. We're going to look at a few options. The first thing we're going to do is to set up our YouTube channel. I'm going to show you how to upload videos to YouTube for your use. I'm going to show you how to flip your classroom using Hangouts on Air with YouTube Live. This will allow you to record a video with streaming live video, which will then be uploaded to your YouTube channel for you to use and distribute as needed. So the first thing you will need to do is to log into your Henderson County Google account. In your mailbox or in any other app, you will want to go to the waffle in the top right hand corner. You're going to have to scroll down to where it says more and there you will find the YouTube app. You're going to click on YouTube and find your account. You will notice that sometimes it will automatically sign you in when you're logged into a Henderson County account and sometimes you do have to click the sign in button. So I'm going to click sign in and it's going to pull my account from the other tab where I was logged into mail. So now I know that I am logged into YouTube. So the first thing that you will want to do is to set up your YouTube channel. To do this, you're going to find the hamburger menu in the top left hand corner. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go down to my channel. You're going to get a menu that's going to remind you who you are using YouTube as. In this case, I know that I'm using my Henderson County account and it will populate your name there for you. Once you have verify that this is the correct name, you're going to click Create Channel. Okay, you will see here that you have the any pictures that you have uploaded to your Google account um, that shows normally in your right hand corner will populate to your YouTube channel. You also at a later time, if you wish, you can add channel art behind your picture and you also can add descriptions. But first thing we're going to do is to go ahead and make sure that we have all of our settings correct and to verify our account. To do this, above your picture, you're going to choose Video Manager. When I get into Video Manager, over to the left you will see a menu and I'm going to come down to Channel and click on Channel. Once I do that, it will automatically put you onto the Status and Features page. Before we can do anything with status and features, we're going to need to verify our account. In order to do this, you will either need to have a telephone number where you can receive a phone call or a mobile phone number where you can receive a text. So you click on verify and then you get to choose which option. Do you want them to call you or do you want them to text you the code? I'm going to select text me a verification code. You can put in your mobile phone number and then choose submit. So this is going to send me a text message with my verification code and now I'm going to type that in and choose submit and you will get a congratulation message letting you know that yours is verified. Once you click continue, it will take you back to the status and features page. Now that our account has been verified, we can actually check through the features and be sure that everything is set up the way that we want it to. I want to point out this first section because many people do not know that this is included in YouTube. This is with personal accounts as well as educational accounts. You always have listed your status as far as copyright and as far as community guidelines. If you are following the copyright regulations for YouTube, which means you're not adding copyrighted music or images or anything that does have copyright rules associated with the video, this will let you know if you have any strikes against you for those things. So you will always want to try to keep your account on green with the smiley face and uh, not break any of the rules that YouTube has for you. A few things down here at the bottom is that you will want to make sure that longer videos is enabled. Sometimes you may be recording a 
play or something that your students are doing in the classroom, you want to be able to upload videos that are longer than 15 minutes. You want to be sure that is enabled. You also want to be sure that video editor is enabled. And in order to do one of the things we're going to do in a few minutes, you're going to need to have live streaming enabled. So if it is not enabled, you're going to want to click enable. And then it takes you to the live streaming page. So now we will have to go over to the left and click on channel again to get to our settings. So if you have been sure that you have live streaming enabled and you've made sure that those other two things are enabled, then you're ready to go on to the next section. The next thing that we're going to look at in our settings for our channel are the upload defaults. Whenever you upload a video into YouTube, it is set with whatever settings you have chosen on this screen to be your default. You'll notice that it's automatically set for your videos to show up as public as soon as you upload them. I prefer that my videos show up as private first, allowing me later to add them to public or unlisted once I'm ready for people to see them. So I prefer to change privacy to private. All this does is set the default so that automatically when you upload a video it will be set to private until you change it. In category, we suggest you use education since this is an educational account and that will allow you um, to have things marked so that these are, are safe videos. You also can add a description but this is going to go on every video you make unless you change it. So I would suggest leaving title and description blank. The important section to check out in about the middle of the page is the comments and ratings section. If you've spent any time on YouTube, you know a lot of the inappropriate material and bad things that happen in YouTube happen in the comments and ratings. So I suggest that you uncheck allow comments and ratings for the video and that way you don't have to worry about that at any point in time. Those are just not allowed. Um, and once I have set these the way that, that I want them to be, I'm going to click save. And now those are set as my defaults. Looking back to the left under the list of settings, we don't have to worry about featured content or branding, but we do need to go to the advanced tab. This is going to show you um, your account information here. You're going to want to change your country to United States. If you have any keywords that you want your channel to have, you can add those here. We have an A-Team keyword, so that if people want to search for us in that way, they can do that. That is completely optional. This is a very important section in your YouTube channel, and that is advertisements. We do not have control over what is advertised alongside your video, so we suggest that you uncheck allow advertisements to be displayed. Once you have unchecked that, you are going to come down, click save, and now your settings have been saved. Once you have done this, you don't have to do that again unless you wish to make a change in your defaults or into any of your status and features. So this is not a section you will have to come to often unless you want to make changes. Okay, so let's look at how you can upload a video to YouTube. Any of the screens that you're on, you'll notice I'm on the settings page over here in under channel, but you can see at the top right hand corner I have an upload button. Sometimes this may show up as an up arrow indicating upload, but it's either an arrow or a button that says upload. But I also want to show you if I go back to my hamburger menu and go to my channel, I that button remains in the top right hand corner so you can click it at any time. So whenever you're ready to upload, you simply click the button. You will then see the page that will allow you to select, to select your files to upload. This is where you will upload from a flash drive or anywhere on your computer. If you are interested in importing videos from Google, those videos will have to be in the Google Photos app. Therefore, 
videos that are just in your drive or just stored in your regular drive folders, you will not be able to import from this screen. You will have to add them to your Google Photos app first. Um, we're not going to go over that today, but if you are interested, that might be something to play with at a later time. But I'm going to upload a video from my computer. So over here, I see where it asks me to select files to upload. I do want to point out before we upload that this is defaulting to the settings that we just set and it is listing this as private when it's first uploaded. So I'm going to click select files to upload and I'm going to get my um, computer menu over to the left so that I can navigate to where my video is. So wherever you have your video saved, I'm going to click on that and open. You'll notice that this upload happens very quickly. The processing will not to take too long either because this is a very short video. It is about 30 seconds. However, if you have a longer video, this may take some time. But once you've uploaded the video, it will continue to process in the background so you do not have to stress about having to walk away from your computer or leave this screen while you're working on it. So you'll notice that did happen pretty quickly for me. And so right here on the left you get your status it tells us that it's complete and it also gives me the URL for the video um, I do want to point out here on this basic info tab that it pulled the title of the video from the original file I had but I do have the option to change this so I can change this Napoleon talking to the camera this is where I can give it a description um, dog talking and I also am able to give this video tags should I choose to make this video public at some point it would allow people to search for these tabs and, okay so I can add any tags that I want to I also at this point could change the the ability to view the video um, I'm going to leave it private for right now and I will show you another way to change that but you can automatically make this either uplisted or public from here and at the bottom you will see some options for the video thumbnail the thumbnail is this small picture that is shown in your list of videos or when they are searched for in YouTube it comes up with a small screenshot that shows up first when you see the video in the list you'll notice that it gives me some options down here and this is a video of my dog so I think all of those three pictures are very cute and I would be fine with any of them however sometimes when you are recording yourself it picks a random screenshot in the middle and it does not look the way that you want it to look as far as your um, thumbnail so I do want to point out that you can upload a custom thumbnail and this is the button that you would push to do that we always put a title at the beginning of our videos and therefore we always customize that with the title as the thumbnail so that that is what will show up in the list on YouTube you do not have to do that you can either use the one that YouTube comes up with or you can make a selection from their three random ones that they give you okay um, once you're finished with this then you can click done and now this video is ready at this URL but it's important to remember that right now because I've set the defaults to that that this video is listed as private so I'm the only person at this point who can see the video um, but this does allow you to click and it opens up the video in the YouTube channel or the YouTube screen that you're used to seeing so I'm going to close that and go back to my YouTube so I'm going to go back to the hamburger and I'm going to go to my channel and now I'm going to go back to video manager at the top now you will see we were back to where we were earlier but now I have a video in my list so as you start to add videos into YouTube and upload you will start to see them populated into a list here once you get a lot of videos you can actually do a search to see 
to find a specific video, but in this case I only have one standing here. I did want to show you that it gives you your thumbnail and it also over here it shows you how you have designated this video and remember that this one is currently set to private so I can always change that if I want to but this is just kind of a visual cue that lets you know how you have it set. If you had left comments on you'd be able to see that here. I've turned those off so I can't see any um, information there. You remember a few minutes ago I clicked on that video so it does show that it's been viewed one time. Uh, I do want to point out this menu if you hit the little arrow beside edit you get some options. If you're in interested in information about enhancements to the video, the audio, annotations, or subtitles, you will want to watch the another video that we have produced about creating content in YouTube and this will give you information about editing and working with videos. Um, but two other things you might need are the option to download as an mp4. You might want to download the video file to have it on a machine and that's available for you. Um, maybe you're going to be somewhere where you will not have internet access so you need the actual video file. So that allows you to download it and then you have the option to delete. But at any time you want to make changes to the settings you can always click this info and settings. And you'll notice over here it always has your URL and down below you will see the basic information that we did earlier. You can still go and make changes to the title and this is where you could make changes to it, the accessibility of the video. Remembering I set defaults to private so at this point no one besides me can see it. When I'm ready to share this video out with people I have two other options. I can choose public which means it is out there on YouTube and easily searchable for the entire world. The uh, second option I have is unlisted. This means that anyone that has the link to the videos that I've sent in an email to parents, to students, to grandparents, to community members, anyone who has that link can actually watch the video if it is unlisted. In most cases for educational videos, this is what I would choose. So once this video is ready for me to send it out, I can change it to unlisted and click save changes. Um, now I'm going to go back to my hamburger menu, go to my channel, and just so you can see I'm going to click on video manager and now you'll notice that when I hover here this video is tagged as unlisted. That means that anyone who I give the link to can actually view it. So that is how simple it is to upload a video from your computer. So once you've taken it, you just go through those simple steps and then you have that ready to go. This is a great way if you've taken video in your classroom of um, student projects um, or anything like that, that you can post it and allow parents or grandparents to see it. Of utmost importance is that you check with whoever at your school is in charge of student information, probably your data manager. You will want to make sure that you do not have any students in a video that do not have permission to be on the web. They need, a media, they need to be uh, approved for media release. So unless their parent has written a letter saying they do not want them to have access to being online um, or their picture or video to be online, that you want to be sure that those students are not put up onto YouTube so that other people can see. That's just a, um, something that you have to check to ensure the privacy of those students who have asked for it. So that is how to upload a video. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is how you can actually make a video of yourself and your screen using live streaming. And this can be helpful if you want to do um, instructional videos or if you want to do help videos later, maybe after you've done something and you want to make a video um, assisting your students with how to do a, a, some kind of a process or you can actually do a lesson itself. Um, some teachers are also using this to make a video to send when they are going to be out sick. Um, or they need um, to get information to their students via video. Um, 
so we're going to use YouTube Live to actually make a video and you'll be able to see what this looks like. Once this video is complete, it will automatically be uploaded into your YouTube channel. And then you can go in and um, look at it, do any editing that you need to do, and then you can send it out for your students' use. So we're going to learn how to do this. Whenever you are in Video Manager, you'll see on the left you'll have your menu. We went to Channel earlier to, to look at our settings. But this time we're going to look at Live Streaming. So I'm going to click on Live Streaming. And right now, what my gut tells me is that I should click Stream Now. But actually, we are not going to use the Stream Now component of Live Streaming. And the reason is that you have to have special software to make this work. Um, and so we do not want to have to install software in order to do this. So we're going to use another option, and it's underneath it called Events. So I'm going to go under Live Streaming and click on Events. Okay, to start a video, I'm going to um, come to this page. I will need a, a headphones with a microphone, or I'll need an external microphone, or you also can use a microphone that is embedded in a camera. It's always best to use a webcam so that people can see you and it gives it a little bit more of a personal touch. So let's get started on doing a live stream and recording a video. In order to do this, once you're under live streaming events, you're going to look in the top right hand corner and choose new live event. You're going to give your event a title that would make sense for what you're doing. So I'm going to do a homework helper video for my students for December 12, 2016. And that way the students can come back and look at this when they get home in the evening and it will help give them some reminders of things that we did in the classroom and they can watch it over and over until they get what they need. You're going to leave this as today or now because we're getting ready to record live right now. I again want things to be private until I'm ready to send them out so I'm going to leave that as private. And we're going to leave the type to quick. One thing that you will want to look at behind is the advanced settings. If I am only doing a video where I'm recording myself, there's no one else actually in the live stream, I'm going to uncheck enable chat because I don't want that to be taking up any of my screen real estate. So I'm going to turn that off because I'm the only one there so we won't need to, hopefully I won't need to chat with myself. So once you have done all of those things, given it a title and left this at quick, we're going to click go live now. And it is going to tell me you're now going to enter a Google Hangout on air. You're going to get a separate window that's going to pop up and you are not going to be live on the air immediately. There is another step. So do not stress that you are being filmed the minute that you click OK. So we're going to click OK. And we are going to get a Google Hangouts on air. And you can see when I look at this, I can tell that you know you can see me I can tell up here what's what the settings are and I will want you to notice that we are currently in the top right hand corner at the bottom we are currently off air which means I am not live streaming they are not recording um, I'm just getting myself ready and prepared to go live when I come here sometimes you may see that your camera is red and if that's true, that means that it's turned off. Um, if you do have a picture here, you can turn that off and only record audio. But it's a, a lot more interesting if you leave your camera on and show yourself on camera. You also can turn your um, microphone off here. Um, so you want to make sure that these are not red when you are ready to start your broadcast. The next thing I want to show you before we actually start is over to the left there's a green icon that's a screen share. Sometimes you may have a need to actually show the viewers of your video what is on your screen. So for example if I'm showing them something about their homework or what they're doing it it will allow me to share my screen 
with the students or the parents or whoever's viewing. When you are ready to do that, you're going to click here and you will get some more directions and we will look at that when we actually make the video. So now that I'm ready to do my Hangout on Air through YouTube Live, I am ensuring that my camera and my microphone are on. Once I'm ready, I'm going to click Start Broadcast. It will still take a few seconds for this to connect. When it is connected, this will change to On Air and you will see up here that you are ready to record. You will want to not start talking until after you are sure you're on air so that you do not cut off any important information at the beginning. So I'm actually going to do a short one so that you can see what this looks like and how it works and I will actually do a screen share so that you can um, see that in action as well. So I'm ready. I'm going to start broadcast. This is going to tell me I'm about to broadcast on YouTube. It tells me I have eight hours. I'm not planning on using my eight hours today. We're just going to do a quick little test of this so you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to click OK. You will see it says that it is starting at the bottom and now it tells me that I'm live. So once I'm live, I can start talking. Hello students, I wanted to provide you with a homework helper for the day. Don't forget the things that we did in class today. Um, I'm going to show my screen. So again, I'm going to go over to the green icon and it asks me, do I want to share my entire screen? Or in the back, I can choose which window I want to share. But in this case, I'm just going to use entire screen so you can see what this is going to look like. Okay. Now you can see that I'm going to see an infinity of myself on the screen and that's because I'm recording myself while recording myself. This is also going to um, remind me at the top with the green that I am presenting to everyone. I could take this down and I could show them what was happening behind. I could give them some kind of directions about something that we were doing in class. Um, but once I'm finished with showing them something on the screen, then I would click stop screen sharing and the video will return to me. So this allows you to make um, a recording of yourself and share your screen with your students remembering that once I've completed this broadcast it is going to automatically upload to my YouTube channel which will be very helpful um, with students so that you can do this very quickly and it will be available to them as soon as possible. So once I'm finished making my video for my students or the parents or whoever I'm going to click at the bottom stop broadcast. So I'm going to do that and at the top it's going to let me know that the broadcast has been terminated and down here it tells us that we're off air. I am still in this hangout however so I'm going to go ahead and hang up to leave the call. It tells me that it's officially over and a recording will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to close this and then I'm going to go um, back to my video manager and now you will see I have the video that we uploaded earlier and I also have a video that was the hangout that we just experienced within YouTube Live. Again remember this is listed as private so once I watch this video and I decide that it is the way that I want it to be and that I'm ready to send it out I can go into info and settings and change the privacy to unlisted or public depending on how I want it to be and click save changes and then that will allow me to send this video out to my students. So that's a pretty simple way of getting a video of yourself um, showing students how to do something or parents or explaining something to them and it's great for supporting the use of flipping in your classroom because you could do these videos as an instructional lesson, you could do them as a help guide, um, anything like that, and you'd be able to send these videos out and um, provide those to your students right away. Um, I did want to point out to you ways that you can find more help about YouTube and about YouTube Live. If you go to the Henderson County website, and if you go under District and choose Departments, 
our department is instructional technology. Over to the left, we have a resources by topic page, and I'm going to choose Google Apps. This is our Google Apps support website. There is some information for staff, but also up here is learn about the apps. So under that tab, I can choose YouTube and Hangouts, and this is going to give you more information about YouTube and how to use it. Um, we hope that you enjoy using YouTube to upload videos and to do um, Hangouts on Air through YouTube Live. I also will remind you that on our YouTube channel, we have a video on creating content. It allows you to make photo slideshows and it also allows you to do video editing on your videos that you have in YouTube. So if you want to try to take things to a little more advanced level, that might be a place to start and it'll allow you to work with the videos you already have. Enjoy using YouTube and we'll see you soon.